Épidémie, la disparition répétée d'ordinateurs, de journalistes travaillant sur le Hello and welcome to Crossing Europe Festival TV, brought to you by our team of 12 participants from Austria, Slovenia, Romania and France. Today we will first take a look at this year's artist and residents Harald Hund and Paul Horn. Afterwards, we will present you an article on the Slovenian animation shorts program Animateka. Lastly, we invite you to join our French colleagues in their attempt to find out more on the audience opinion on French cinema. But for now, a look at the artist and resident Hund and Horn. collaboration is that um, we share both this, uh, quite a similar sense of humor I'd say and uh, that we have like different abilities so where I come from is mostly from the video side editing or camera compositing and Paul comes from uh, set designer sides painting also and that makes a great combination in the beginning, it was just the need to work with somebody, and, um, and Harald invited me to do a film with him, and that's how we started, very easily, just very playful, and then we noticed that we have the same taste of humor, like he said before, and, and then everybody just took a part of the, of the works which had to be done during a film like set design and, and editing and so on. Apnea is, um, is an underwater film and um, we made like two films before which are kind of similar. One is, the first is Tomato Heads, uh, which we made in 2001 actually, and the second one was uh, Dropping Furniture. And then uh, I, thought, I started to think about, um, is there actually a line which goes through our work? So like when we wrote the concept of dropping furniture together, um, uh, Paul came up with this notion of normality and norms, so that the life we live is uh, very defined by norms, or like the families in which we grow up is, uh, uh, they have their norms, you know, it's like um, you get educated in a certain way and you are very limited by your parents or by society, whatever. And then I was like, I love swimming and diving and I was like swimming in the pool. And then I just saw this scene of somebody sitting on a sofa, on a couch, watching TV. I saw it in front of my eyes. So, uh, and then um, I thought it would be great follow up to tomato heads and dropping furniture and um, so like tomato heads and dropping furniture have to do with gravity and like swimming also has, has to do with gravity and that's how the whole thing evolved. Uh, first there was the idea and then I saw okay it would be very um, uh, would be great to link to link the film to Tomato Heads and Dropping Furniture. No, it was not done by post production. It's all live. I mean, you, what you see is what you see, um, and uh, the, the actors were all um, apnea divers, so that they they were trained to um, keep the air inside for a minute underwater, and every actor had a security diver beside him and. He delivered the air when it was necessary. So we had like to shoot very short shots and for less than a minute. The most complicated thing is that um, everything is lighter than water. So if you have like toast or cornflakes or even tissues, um, it swims. So we had to keep everything down and that's 
that was a kind of a problem because we needed to put a lot of weights for everything we, we used on water, even the clothes. For example, if you lay down on a bed, um, you have to put a lot of weight, like 80 kilos, on the, on the actor so he can like stay underground, you know. Because if you, do, if you don't, everything, the hands and the arms and the legs are like swinging up, you know. We are the Frenchies of the crew and only interested in French cinema. Uh, what's your opinion on French cinema? Um, yeah. No. No? No. <laughs> no. Nope. So what's your favorite French movie? Amélie. <laughs> Amélie. Amélie movie. Amélie. <laughs> I think it's still... Oh, is it a French movie? Is this from French or is this a Hollywood? Can you play a scene for us at François Ozon? Um. That was swimming pool of François Ozon. <laughs> But no. some were nice. What, what, what was it? J'aime le cinéma français. J'aime le cinéma français. <laughs> yeah, I like French cinema. Oh, J'adore le cinéma français. Ah. Parfait. J'aime le cinéma français. Hello, I'm sitting here with uh, Igor Prasel. He's the director of Animateka program in Crossing Europe Film Festival. Uh, hello and thank you for joining us. And okay, so my first question would be, how did the thought to put Animateka on the Crossing Europe Festival cross your mind? What was the idea behind it? Why did you decide to put it here? Well, actually, it was the organizers uh, asking, and uh, especially Victoria Pelzer, she is the assistant to Christina Dolhofer, and she's being involved with the animation film, um, curating the animation avant garde program at the Vienna Independent Short Festival. She's been a guest of uh, Animateka in Ljubljana for a few years already. But it's not my first uh, visit of uh, Crossing Europe Links with animation program because uh, three years ago, or four years ago, uh, together with Thomas Renoldner, uh, my uh, very good friend and Austrian colleague and uh, big connoisseur of animation film, we've been starting a program which was called uh, Yearly uh, uh, European Animation Highlights with the idea that uh, Crossing Europe will give us a platform to develop this uh, program where we would present every year the best European animation films and we even had an idea to publish a DVD compilation but at the end uh, because of financial and also like other um, uh, things, the, the project didn't work, even though I think it's really something to, to be developed yet. And then I personally uh, focused and uh, concentrated on my own festival, which is like Animateca International Animation Film Festival in Ljubljana. Uh, why did you choose Central and Eastern Europe? That was intentionally. In uh, 2004, when I started the festival, I was thinking, okay, okay, it should not be just another festival like all of them with an international uh, competition. But because I think that uh, films from this area, which includes like uh, Italy in the uh, southwest until uh, Estonia in the northeast, and Poland in the um, northwest and Albania in the so, so it's like we draw ourselves uh, the borders of this uh, region, which is more than geographical a little bit, but uh, they are highly misrepresented at other festivals. Films from this region usually you will get uh, French, German, English, American, Japanese films, and only few from the from this area. And uh, I'm really happy to that we proved. Uh, that um, there are a lot of films and not but on, not only quantity uh, also they are very much uh, high in quality and so it's like this will stay as one speciality of the Animateca festival to have the, the regional 
selection. What is the feedback on Animateka? The thing is that uh, you hardly can see short animated uh, films out of a festival circuit. So that's you know the the biggest uh, problem. Like there are no there's no TV distribution. There is no way that you would see a short film uh, in a cinema being presented before the uh, feature film. So at the end, like festivals and the internet is the only. Um, uh, Meaning, I mean, only medium where you can go, uh, see these films. With the difference that at the festival, the program is curated, which means like the somebody is putting those films in a, in a right order or is choosing them, you know, according to a, some ry rhythm of, of the screening. And in Ljubljana, like the audience, they don't have uh, another chance. So it's like they 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 are forced to to watch whatever. We present it to them, but I think that we found uh, kind of a nice uh, um, program uh, um, concept because uh, besides the competition of uh, short from Central and Eastern Europe, we are screening for uh, the youngest public an international program of uh, animated films for children. It has its own special public, like in the mornings, with discussions and uh, presentation of the, of the films in advance. And then we, last year we started a new competition program, which is like European uh, students, which, like the production is really, really strong uh, in the last five years, and uh, they deserve to have their own program uh, specifically for, for them. And then besides like feature animated films, uh, documentary about animation, uh, historical retrospectives, authors retrospectives, uh, like, like a serious festival uh, shoot program. Yeah, we're really excited to see more of that. Um, and now I just want to ask you something about yourself. So what attracted you to animation? Is it you're, you're animating yourself or is it just a passion that you have, your hobby? No, I, I, was, I came from uh, comics. I was an, uh, the editor of a comics magazine, Street Burger, in uh, Ljubljana as well. And then I, had a, I was really lucky because I started to collaborate with the Slovenian Cinematheque in Ljubljana in 1999. And... Um, the director at that time, Silvan Furlan, uh, when I noticed that nobody is really doing anything with animation films seriously in Slovenia, he just gave me a chance to develop uh, monthly uh, animation film programs at the Cinematheque. So immediately we started really strong, I don't know, with the retrospective of uh, really important names like uh, Jerzy Kucha from Poland or Jan Schwankmeier from Czech Republic. And uh, developing uh, those monthly uh, screenings, we came to the idea that Ljubljana is ready for a festival that will present uh, even more contemporary uh, films. And personally, I'm completely, I don't have enough of uh, animation films even today after 10 years of uh, going around festivals and watching because I, I still find uh, really original uh, films in terms of uh, storytelling or, or usually visual and uh, because animation is a medium where you can really bring to life uh, uh, anything. For, for example, if I would like to be an animator or put something on to Animateka, um, what what would you what kind of skills do I have to have? Is are there schools like in Slovenia? Could you go somewhere to study this and <laughs> develop? I think uh, we are the last country in Europe where only last year we started to some programs uh, at the university level. level. Uh, while, for example, Austria, I think almost every city already had an arts academy where animation can be studied. And then, like, don't if we start to think about France or Germany or England, really, like, this study is becoming a real serious uh, study, and more and more young people are applying. But uh, yeah, as I was telling, sometimes you don't need a school. It's like if you have a good idea and. Uh, for example, I don't know, stop motion, it's really easy to do. We, we are running also a lot of workshops for children uh, in, all around Slovenia with our education educational program, which is called The Elephant. And where you can, you can see that a five, six year old, old child uh, in two hours actually can learn even like the, how to click, how to film, how to edit. It's really kind of not so difficult and then depends on your idea. Nowadays, all the film industry is depending on, on animation because there are special effects being used in uh, fiction films more and more that are, you know, without animation, without uh, special effects, it will not be possible to make um, a, almost a film today. Yeah, we see it on the 8th Animateki with 5 in 12 December in Ljubljana.
And that's it for today's Crossing Europe Festival TV. Thank you for watching. We see you again tomorrow at 8 p.m. on Dorf TV. So tune in.